Welcome to the Vine Resources Podcast Show. Welcome to another edition of the Vine Resources Podcast Show. I'm really happy to have with me on the line today, Piotr Leone. Uh, Piotr is the uh, uh, COO, I think I've got that right, haven't I? Uh, the COO of uh, Ge- Geometry Global. Uh, Piotr, thanks for coming on the line. Thank you, David, for having me on the show. It's, very, it's a great opportunity. Thank you. And thank you for, I know you've been flying here, then, everywhere around the world, so I'm glad we managed to get some, a couple of minutes of your time from Milan today. Um, why don't you just give our listeners a bit of an introduction about yourself and the company? Yeah, great. So my name is Peter Rioni, as you said. I'm uh, running uh, as, the, as a Chief Operating Officer, Global Chief Operating Officer, Geometry Intelligence. Uh, this is a division of uh, Geometry Global, uh, which is a company that uh, uh, focuses on uh, uh, developing communication that uh, wants to change behavior of, of potential customers into uh, behaviors that are, uh, of course, in favor of the brand owners uh, which we represent. Okay? Uh, Geometry is owned by WPP. WPP is the largest uh, uh, advertising and marketing services company worldwide. And what I do specifically, so Geometry Intelligence, is actually uh, a consulting uh, operation within Geometry Global that uh, uh, studies uh, what are the journey maps uh, that people take from when they want to buy something to when they buy that something, so to when they satisfy their needs, okay? We basically design those journey maps and we are able to consult customers on where an investment would be efficient because they have the likelihood to convert those customers that are on a journey to buy something and where instead you know they don't really convert so no point to invest and of course which type of uh, um, activities uh, needs to be put in place to drive that conversion we have uh, you know, we have uh, basically a platform that is uh, you know based on a set of algorithms that allow us really to segment the different behaviors that people take when they want to buy something, which is great. It's, uh, it's something that helps clients to uh, address the very important question of where is the 50% of my investment that works and where is the 50% of my investment that doesn't work. Um, that's basically what we do. Fantastic. And I'm assuming that that doesn't matter what that buyer journey is, whether that's online or offline. Absolutely. It's, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter whether it's online or offline. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter the category. Whenever you start uh, and you want to buy something, you start a mission. That mission may be short or long. In any case, you know, we can trace that mission. We can understand which, are, which one are the steps you take and which of those can really drive your uh, conversion. Yeah, and just to give us a sense of scale, although, although uh, uh, this is part of the startup operation within the company, there's over about 3,500 people in the, in the whole company globally. Where's your teams or where's the employees sat generally and where, where's your customers based? We are, uh, we are basically a global operation, so we are present uh, globally. Uh, you, wherever it is business, we are present, so all the large countries you can think of. Um, our business is uh, basically, I would say, um, mostly present in Europe and US. Uh, we, have a, we have a fast growing business in Asia and obviously an interesting business also in, in Latin America. In terms of the intelligence piece, we are operating out of a few hubs. That would be North America, New York, Sao Paulo, London, Paris, uh, Dubai, South Africa, which is Johannesburg, and then uh, um, basically China. So this is uh, how we're operating. Um, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a very interesting community of talents that uh, wants to change the rules of the game. We're in an industry that is transforming rapidly, uh, and the type of talents that we have on board are uh, people that really want to make a change, which is, uh, which is great. Fantastic. Well, look, we'll jump straight into the questions. Um, why don't you share what a typical day in the business looks like for you as the leader? You mentioned before I travel a lot. Uh, is my day is different day to day. I mean, every day is different, really. I mean, I guess it's the life of any consultant. Uh, in reality, I mean, I, I am thinking that uh, more than how a day looks like for me is more what type of routines get me going, okay, which is more important. And I, I have three routines, three basic routines. That I hope they don't make you laugh, but the first one, it starts at 7, 7.30 when I wake up. I don't stand up right away from bed. I just stay there a few seconds to figure out where I am. Because I'm tra- the pace of travel is so much that a lot of, in a lot of occasions I wake up and I have to reconstruct what was the last airport I landed at, okay? It has happened in multiple occasions that actually I, I, I came down from the bed from the wrong side and actually I crashed or something happened. So first of all, I understand where I am. 
The second thing is uh, a good, good breakfast because I don't know when the next meal is going to be and that if there is going to be another meal, okay? Um, and the last one comes usually in the evening when I call family, wherever I am in the world I call family, to check in or to say, yeah, well, I'm not there, in, I'm not there physically but I'm there in spirit, so I try to, you know, to figure out what happened at home and how things were going. And in between, of course, uh, you know, there are lots of meetings, lots of uh, strategy analysis, um, HR matters, finance reporting, and all lot, okay? So I would say that uh, the day is very different in which part, depending on which part of the world I am, but those routines are the, are the ones that uh, keep me going. Fantastic. Can you name a, perhaps a person that has a, a tremendous impact on you as a leader, perhaps even someone who's been a mentor to you? Yeah, I, I, I think there are two that really stick out. Uh, one, uh, the first one was called Bert Michael. He was a German. He is, he is a German, actually. He, he has been leading for many years a very important advertising group uh, in, uh, in Germany. I was reporting to him when for uh, approximately 15 years I've been running multiple uh, business entities in Central and Eastern Europe. I was living in Austria, Hungary, in Poland and Russia and reporting to him. And he really teach me how to run a business in a very trans like, typical German, very transparent, very human, very uh, to the point, okay? He teach me something that I think uh, was really then became part of, of who I am, my culture, which is uh, uh, leadership is not something that is written on a business card. Leadership is democratic leadership. That's what's functioned the best. When people think you are a leader and you can conduct them, they will surround you and they will fight for you uh, and with you. And that's something that uh, I've always been focusing on. Make sure that, uh, you know, I act... Uh, um, I act uh, with my team uh, and lead my team, uh, but in, in a democratic manner, which I think is uh, really important. The second person is an American, Carolyn Carter. She was my boss for the last eight, nine years. And uh, uh, what, uh, what, <coughs> what really I learned from her is that, um, you know, lots of people, lots of consultants, lots of different companies are chasing money. I mean, she teach me that you don't chase money, uh, neither personally nor as a company you create the condition for money to chase you, which I think is an interesting perspective. I mean, if you do what you love, then success will follow. If as a company you give a reason for client to search for you, then you will be successful. Uh, you know, it's kind of turning a, a bit around the, the, the problem of growth, okay? But, but this is what uh, really she teach me. And every time I do something, I think, uh, how am I going to be different versus whatever else is in the market so that uh, people may, you know, may be interested in what, what we have to offer. Em employee engagement is critical to the success of any business. So I'm just curious to find out what, what, are you, what have you been doing from the top within the organization and what will you be doing now within the new, the new startup? Yeah, I would say that uh, there are three elements that keep me, you know, that I keep very clear in my mind and are clear for the people I lead. The first thing is the mantra when it comes to employee engagement. And uh, the mantra is always... Uh, uh, give and gets need to be on balance, okay? So what I give uh, as a company and what I get as a company and what you get as an employee needs to be on balance. That's the first thing. The second thing is that um, when it comes to KPI and understanding the performance of people, it's really important to understand that uh, people have an agenda in life. They may know, they may not know, but they have an agenda. And so the company, the company has an agenda. You know, it's, it's clearly they want to advance their business. Uh, it's very important in the selection process to ensure that the agenda of the people and the agenda of uh, the company somehow are overlapping. They will not overlap for life, but they should overlap for a long enough uh, part of the journey, okay? So <coughs> understanding uh, what type of talent we bring in, how basically their KPI, the KPI we give them uh, can uh, uh, make them happy and they can feel, recognize themselves in those KPIs is really what makes, uh, you know, what makes it work. And of course, the reward strategy is uh, always aligned in a transparent manner to the KPI that we've given to the people. So, you know, this is the company, this is the agenda of the company, this is how you can contribute, so clarity on how you can contribute to the agenda of the company. And then last but not least, you know, if this comes this way and if you perform this way, this is what you should expect. Uh, so transparency, transparency, clarity, and, uh, and uh, something that the person will enjoy doing because it's part of his value system and his agenda. As far as uh, the startup, it's all about innovation. It's all about innovation, it's all about drive. So it's all about uh, uh, finding people, as I said before, that want to change how the industry works. So, you know, the work for talent uh, clearly is out there. And, uh, you know, what we need to do is to make sure that we have uh, a compelling offer, uh, which is not only the, you know, the, the compensation piece, 
but the all engagement and all work structure that we have created in order to, to house those talents that have uh, that spirit of pioneer that we really require in this, in this startup. What do you believe is the biggest challenge facing business leaders today? Well, it's, it's a good question. Uh, I would say that uh, it's all about uh, feasibility. Okay, there are thousands of ideas out there. Everybody comes with an idea every you know, every second. The question mark is uh, which one of the many ideas that are there or that are are brought to the attention of business leaders has the potential has the potential to drive growth, but at the same time is feasible. Uh, be, because uh, lots of people uh, uh, have, uh, have ideas on how to grow, to grow business, but a lot of uh, the issues are today have to do with the feasibility. So let's make it happen, let's make it happen in a sustainable way, because feasibility and sustainability are very much, uh, are very entrenched as, uh, you know, as uh, are two words that are very, very connected to each other, okay? So it's, uh, I think the feasibility and sustainability are the key issues that uh, business leaders have uh, in front of them. Following that, what, what do you believe is the best, or what was the best piece of business advice you've ever received so far? I mean, I would say is is the golden rule, is what uh, philosophies and philosophers have been talking about, and my mother teach me when I was a kid, which is, uh, you know, do to others what you want others to do to you. So, you know, make sure that, uh, that you are treating people in the same way you want to be treated. Uh, this has always been a, a key driver in my relationship with people. And being that we, I'm in a company that delivers services is extremely important, uh, you know, to keep that very clear in, in mind. How do you help a new employee understand the culture of the organization? I was mentioning before, uh, I was touching base a little bit on the recruitment process that we have in place. Uh, we have a very articulated competence pyramid that we are following when we recruit employees. Okay? And a lot of this has to do, as I said before, with what are the drivers in the life of people. Think of millennials versus baby, baby boomers. Okay? Of, these are two extremes, to, give an, to make an example. There are different drivers and different value sets in those two type of population, okay? Um, so what, uh, what I make sure is that the type of people that I bring in is, type of, is the type of people that I think will fit in the culture of the organization. So it's not, I'm, of course I meet them every time new people come in, I meet them, I talk to them, I tell them what is their contribution and where I see their contribution be valuable within the overall proposition of the organization. But at the same time I have to say that if the recruitment, pro if the recruitment process has been uh, successful, and I have to say that we have quite a good rate in that space, um, then there is not much explanation that I need to give in uh, what type of culture you will find. Is the, is the type of person that has been selected to fit in that culture. And then, of course, being part of a team that has clear objectives uh, to deliver does the rest of the job, you know. So it's, uh, it's really, there is not much science about it. It has all to do with the recruitment process. What's, what's the one mistake you, you've witnessed business leaders making more frequently than others? Yes, yeah, um, I would say that uh, people, uh, some business leaders are thinking uh, uh, that it's all about short term. And I have to say that if you look at uh, how nowadays performance of companies is valued, which is uh, of course on, on uh, value growth really, uh, it's, uh, it's clear why people think that way. But uh, the long term is nothing else than uh, the sum up of a lot of short terms. So if you have clarity on where you want to bring the organization or where, you know, you wanna, where are you pointing, if, you have, if you're clear on the lighthouse of your business, then uh, you will do a good job. If uh, you are only focusing on the short term, then in many occasions basically what's happening is that you are, uh, you are, you are just going, uh, uh, there is lack of consistency and coherence in what you're doing and that will turn against you basically. Piotr, in your, in your experience, what's the one behavior that you perhaps have seen derail more leaders' careers? I would say when, uh, when, uh, when some business leaders think that, uh, um, lose track on the fact that uh, the longevity of the company is longer than the longevity of their leadership. So if they try to basically um, a costume the, the, how the company operate, operates on their own leadership style, that, that is when it, it tends to go wrong and it works against them. Uh, it's more, uh, uh, we as leaders need to adapt our uh, way of leading an organization to what the company is about, to how the company has been run. Otherwise, we just make succession process uh, complicated and uh, we risk to turn off a lot of the employees that are in the organization and therefore create uh, those type of uh, uh, waves that don't, you know, are no good for business. Understood. How do you see your industry changing in the, in the next few years and how do you th think that will affect your ability to hire and attract the best talent? I mean, I'm, I'm in a business, uh, a consulting business where artificial intelligence will play a big, big role, okay? 
So if you, so if you, look, if you look at what ECO can do now for Amazon, okay, you can see, you can imagine uh, in four or five years what will happen in businesses like a lawyer, so like accountancy or, or like marketing and communication, in fact. Uh, so I think the type of business, the type of profiles that we will, this industry will require are going to change dramatically in the future. Um, about uh, going back to your question, which is how do I attract the best people, is, uh, as I said, if I'm clear on what the long term is, I know where this company you know, will uh, end up in terms of the services that will have to be delivered to customers, and therefore I start uh, slowly but surely to bring the right type of people that are focusing on innovation and, and are pioneers. So I go back to what I said before. It's more uh, the attitude and the talent today rather than uh, the specific skills that they have because uh, attitude and talent goes much longer way than the specific skills that they can acquire while working for us. If you had your time again and perhaps uh, were given your 20 year old self advice, what's the one thing that you would tell yourself to do? This is the best questions of all <laughs> and it's the one that uh, you know, I ask myself a lot of times and I have to say that every time I came to this uh, type of thought, I would say uh, keep on balance uh, uh, the professional life and the business life because uh, you know especially my generation has focused a lot of their time on business but business is a rental if you see what I mean so you are there for a certain time while uh, personal life will stay there forever okay so you need to keep on balance and they both need uh, they both need the same level of investment so you need to keep it really on balance uh, which I think uh, it's, it's an advice that for sure I would give to my son when he starts to going in business. Thank you for so much for sharing that, Pieter. And, and how can people get in touch with you? What's the best way they can reach out to you and the company? Well, you can reach the company by going to the website. It's the easiest part. As I said, we're global. So wherever you connect to the web, uh, you can get access to the closest company. That would be www.geometry.com. Okay. And as far as me, my email address is pietro.leoni at geometry.com. Thank you so much for joining us on the show and I wish you also the best of luck for this new division within the organization. Thank you, David. It's been a pleasure being here with you today.